Well, surprise, surprise, here we go. Hillary Clinton taking another shot at President Trump ahead of the 2024 election. Trump was like, you know, just gaga over Putin because Putin does what he would like to do, kill his opposition, imprison his opposition, drive, you know, journalists and others into exile, rule without any check or balance. That's what Trump really wants. Hmm. Well, here to react, Fox News contributor Joe Concha. You know, Joe, I'm glad she found her way out of the forest. Remember, she was roaming around That's after right. losing the 2016 election. Mm -hmm. You would expect this kind of hyperbole from, let's say, Joe Scarborough, who has intimated that you may remember the clip that oh, yes. Donald Trump wants to execute generals. But from a former Democratic nominee to have this. Yeah, Hillary Clinton has a lot of spare time since losing eight years ago. She's been on a constant public therapy tour, right, where she does these interviews still talking about what Donald Trump will do when he is president. Wow. If only we knew what Donald Trump would do when he's president. That's right. He was president. No one was imprisoned. And if you recall, 35 solo press conferences Donald Trump gave in his final year in office. How many has Joe Biden given this year hmm. or in the past nine months? Zero point zero, because they know if you take Joe Biden out of a teleprompter, it will be clean up on aisle five, 14, your former press secretary, uh, 27, and we'll get stories about how his uncle Bowser was killed by cannibals, right? So Hillary Clinton can talk all, he, all she wants about how what a danger Donald Trump will be. What they never talk about is policy, that Donald Trump is on the right side when it comes to bringing down inflation or gas prices or crime or the border and immigration. They can't talk about policy, so they go with fear mongering. And it shows you how desperate things are now at this point, because Democrats can read polls and they know that Joe Biden is trailing currently in North Carolina, in Georgia, Arizona, Nevada, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Michigan. If that happens and Donald Trump even wins half those states, he's the next president, Kelly. And to that point, you're looking at our polls. Here you see Trump plus six in Georgia, Trump plus three in Michigan, a yep. tie in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. All of these numbers, interestingly, shaken up when you add in an RFK Jr. But you're exactly right. You know, Trump, he'll, he'll be in court all day and then he'll go out and speak to reporters with fluidity. Yeah. He'll often talk about the issues or the cases um, with real knowledge. And President <laughs> Biden, I mean, if I'm his press person, you can't trust him to, to be with reporters for more than 30 seconds. Precisely. And while the State of the Union, people say, wow, what a great State of the Union. Yeah, Joe Biden can still read a teleprompter. But you take him outside of scripted remarks and suddenly you see what everybody else sees, which is an 81-year-old man who, if he wins re-election, imagine the 86-year-old version of Joe Biden in the Oval Office. Yeah. That's something that even Democrats can't stomach at this point. Well, speaking of Democrats, we have a little more Democratic cringe for you. Watch this, Joe really? and Obama campaign ad. Some things just go together, like me and Joe. Ice cream on a hot summer day. A strong grassroots team and a winning campaign. Yeah. Folks, we really need you on our side. Here's what I'm interested in here, Joe. Yeah. So you have them acting all chummy. They do this fundraiser together. But mm -hmm. you know this. You study the media. It wasn't long ago where we had headlines like this. This was back when Biden was vice president. This is Washington Post magazine. The poignant but complicated friendship of Joe Biden and Barack Obama. They say this, describing a tweet where Joe Biden put out a friendship bracelet with Barack Obama. The tweet was full of longing. On National Best Friends Day in June, Joe Biden posted a Barack and Joe friendship bracelet on his 2020 campaign Twitter account with the greeting, Happy Best Friends Day to my friend Barack Obama. But Obama, he was silent, no reply, nothing. <laughs> That's true. Look, uh, Will lives in Texas. Pete lives now in Tennessee. I'm a Jersey guy. We will all tell you that when it comes to our friends, right, guys, whether it was a fraternity house or whether it be high school friends we played football with, none of us share friendship bracelets. <laughs> That's not a thing among guys, right? The whole BFF thing, I have never bought. It's the first line in, in, in my book, Come On Man, uh, where Barack Obama reportedly said that never underestimate Joe Biden's ability to expletive things up, right? In other words, there's not a lot of respect there. Biden was chosen by Obama for foreign policy experience, which, as we know, he's been wrong basically on everything. But that's the reason why they are even connected in any way, shape or form. And look, Obama is still relatively popular among Democrats. Yes. Right. So that's why we're seeing ads like this. But Obama and his people like David Axelrod know that this president is in serious trouble when it comes to reelection, hence why you have to bring in these sort of ads. But 
there's no authenticity to it. And no. people like that. You could like or dislike Donald Trump. The guy is who he is. He's authentic. And nobody likes a phony politician establishment at this point. And that seems so establishment, that digital ad. It does. And they're trying to bring in small dollar donations. And you remember they congregated the three presidents right across from us in Radio City Music Hall, yeah. Clinton, Obama, Biden. They broke a record, $25 million in fundraising, and then Trump trounced the record the next week at Mar-a-Lago with a $50 million fundraiser. Here's the numbers now, though. March fundraising, Biden, $90 million, Trump, $66 million, cash on hand, $192 million versus Trump's $93 million. So mm -hmm. some ground to make up for Republicans, but Trump, you know, he had that $50 million fundraiser. So And he could do it again, probably. And I'm not sure money means as much as it used to, like buying ads in <laughs> key swing states. Social media drives elections more and more as we're seeing and that's basically free so hillary clinton outraised donald trump two to one in 2016 and trump still won i'm not saying money isn't important but it isn't as important as it used to be but i think donald trump will close that gap regardless because and, enthusiasm's on his side kelly and as you know trump is driving the narrative earn media every time he walks in and out of the courtroom. He is commanding attention. He is driving the media. And he's going to do a rally in, at the Jersey Shore, which is uh, near and dear to my heart. So Wildwood, New Jersey. New Jersey is in play. Yeah. We, we saw that from 538. He's uh, within the uh, margin of error, Donald Trump, wow. in New Jersey. That's going to make Biden spend money and time in states he doesn't want to, like Virginia or Jersey yeah. or other places that he may have taken for yeah. granted in the past. Trump needs to keep making stops at Harlem Bodegas. Very powerful, Indeed. powerful moments. Thank you very much, Joe Conte. You look great in green. Thank you. It. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Not really.